This is the Garden of English, I'm Tim Freitas, and today we are going to talk about five reads that I want to encourage you all to pick up as you transition into the next part of this year and as we wind down from a crazy 2020. I also want to encourage you to wait till the end of the video because we are going to give away some free Garden of English merch, but you got to wait till the end to catch the details on how to enter for that giveaway. But we will start with book number one. Book number one is here to help us enjoy this year and have some laughs. And you can see right here on my shirt that it's The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've got a copy of it right here. Why should you pick up this book? Well, because we are in a state of transition and many of us have questions, big, big questions about life, the universe and everything. And sure enough, this book claims to answer it. And as it does, it does so in a completely hysterical manner. In fact, I have my original copy of this book from when I was younger and in high school that my English teacher gave me. It's been well used, there's no cover. And he once told me if you can make it past the third page without laughing, he actually wondered if that person was actually human. So, find out if you're human, pick up Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and remember that when you leave your home this summer, when it's actually safe to, don't forget to bring your towel. All hitchhikers are doing it. Book number two on this list happens to be my most favorite book to teach to students. Too bad I haven't actually taught the book since 2013. But I do indeed love it. It is a story about transitions. It's a story about dealing with trauma. It's a story about how we live our lives in isolation and in community. And this book is The Catcher in the Rye. We have a main character who goes to Pensy Prep. I can't tell if you can see my shirt. There it is, Pensy Prep. And he is dealing with being expelled. He's dealing with finding motivation. He's dealing with family issues. He's dealing with all of these things and he's journeying through New York while he does so. Now, if you've actually read this book in school and you've decided that you hated it, I want to tell you the reason why you hate it is because your teacher did not teach it good. Good. Oh my gosh, I'm an English teacher. Did not teach it well at all because this book is incredible for adolescents because it relates so much to them. And if you found yourself reading it and you did read it and you hated Holden, well, you were supposed to. But the reason why is because you should have seen a lot of yourself in Holden. You should have hated his hypocrisy and then realized that perhaps you are as well because that's part of the human condition. So if you want to learn a little bit more about yourself and if you want to learn where the ducks go when the pond freezes over, then you should pick up this book. For book number three, I do not have a shirt to represent it, but what I do have is I have a sleeve to represent it. This book is often considered a children's book, but it is not just a children's book. It is an incredibly in-depth story that looks at how we adapt and how we navigate the world around us and search for our identity. And this is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now, this is not the whole book. This is all of Lewis Carroll's works, right? Alice in Wonderland is a nice quick read, uh, a nice fun read, a nice whimsical read that's about 100 pages long. But once again, it explores amazingly in-depth themes, themes that you could possibly write about on your AP Wit exam for you that are going into AP Lit for next year. And actually, I wrote about this on my teacher exam when I was becoming certified as a teacher. So trust me, the depth here is there. It's an easy read. It's a fun read. And it's originally a story that was told to a little girl while she was on a canoe trip. And then she liked it so much, she asked Lewis Carroll to actually write it down. So he did. So all those rumors that this is a drug trip and all of those sorts of things, we can kiss those goodbye. But sure enough, it's a super fun read, and I encourage you to pick it up this summer. Ray Bradbury's most famous book is Fahrenheit 451, and sometimes I feel like I am living in Fahrenheit 451, but that is not the book that I'm going to recommend by him right now. I encourage you during this summer to pick up, or at any point actually, right, to pick up Dandelion Wine. It's awfully nice to reflect on the days of yesteryear and the naivete of childhood, and I encourage you to pick this up because this will help you to do so. Especially if you're in the point of life where you are transitioning into adulthood. This will bring you back, allow you to cherish certain memories, allow you to consider how they have built your character, but also encourage you to move on as we consider growing up. 
It has similar themes to The Catcher in the Rye, but it's done very, very differently, um, and it's really worth exploring, and there's a certain sense of comfort that you get when you read a book like this. I don't know why this isn't Ray Bradbury's masterpiece, but sure enough, it should be. Have you ever actually seen a movie that's better than the book? Didn't think so, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. I've seen one. It's called Stardust. But that is not the book that I'm going to recommend right now. My last book recommendation for some light reading over the summer, or whenever you actually choose to watch this video or see this video or pick up the book, right, is going to be one that I do not actually have in my hands. And the reason why is because I didn't read it with my hands and my eyes. I listened to it. And I listened to it not only once, but twice. And that is Ready Player One. Now, I brought up the book and movie thing earlier just because the movie for this book sucks. So if you saw the movie and you were like, I hated that, why would I read that book? You want to read the book because it's actually awesome. The movie itself can only give you a couple cool visuals, but that's about it. Now, if you saw the movie and you really liked it and you're like, what, that wasn't garbage? I love that movie. Well, then read the book because you'll end up liking the book way more. And I'm glad that you actually got the experience of being able to like the movie. That's not something that I actually got to experience myself. What's excellent about Ready Player One is that it's dystopian. It's very, very he here and now. I kid you not, as I was reading it, I was like, wow, this could actually be the United States tomorrow. But it also brings us back to the times of yesteryear with arcades and plenty of 80s references. Kind of think Stranger Things here, right? It's kind of Stranger Things meets um, Fahrenheit 451 meets a little bit of the Hunger Games. I mean, we could just put this all in here for its own original piece. Now, I've given you my five books that I recommend that you read rather leisurely over the summer. A lot of them deal with transitions. A lot of them deal with getting older. A lot of them deal uh, with these common, common places that we are in life. How do we deal with loss? How do we deal with growing up? How do we deal with change? And these are books that speak to us. But these are only five. There are so many other good books. And I want to hear what books you would recommend. So because of that, we're running a giveaway for a Garden of English merch. And you could win, or you will get, I should say, uh, if you're selected, you will get either a Garden of English sweatshirt or I will offer you two Garden of English t-shirts. And the reason why is because we've got five different designs. You have choices. You could pick from this design or this design, or this design, or this design, or this design. So you have your choice, but in order to enter this giveaway, you all you need to do is, well, be above the age of 13, and enter a comment down below about a book that you would recommend that people read for the summer. No explanation needed. You put a book title there and we are good to go. I encourage you to like and subscribe. Over the summer, we're gonna start doing a uh, series on writing a college essay. I'm going to start doing a mini series as well on the catcher in the rye itself so you can look for that if any of you are interested in having a discussion about that. Um, I'll do a 16 part mini series based on each chapter. So please like, please subscribe, and please leave a comment down below for some good reads that we can pick up over the summer and continue to have this conversation.